Hey everyone, this time we're gonna make a very simple but really cool little project. These geometric planners. As far as materials, all you need are these three inch pen turning blanks that you can pick up on eBay or your local lumber store. These steel condiment containers that you can pick up on Amazon and the spray paint of your choice. Let's get a high level view of the plan. Basically, we're going to be making angular bevel cuts all the way around the long wood block and then slicing the wood block with more angular cuts to split it into three separate planners. The turning blanks that I bought were rough cut, so I ran them through the planer and got them squared up. If you don't have a planer, just buy lumber that is labeled as S3S or S4S, which means the lumber yard has already squared up the surfaces for you. I set up my miter saw with a fine finish blade. Having a clean finish right off the saw reduced the need for sanding later on. And since I want the angles on the planters to be sharp, the less sanding the better. I used my miter saw to make sure the ends of the block were squared up as well. This is important so that you can draw accurate guidelines all the way around the sides and end of the wood block. We'll be making angular cuts on the sides and ends of the block that all meet at the same height. So drawing this guideline at that height where the cuts meet will make this task much easier. I then sketched guidelines for the angled bevel cuts on the ends of the block and took the blocks to the miter saw to make the cuts. You could also make these bevel cuts on the ends using the miter sled on your table saw, like this one that I got from Craig Tools. I then dialed in the angle on my table saw to make the long bevel cuts along the sides of the block. I made multiple passes along the sides, sneaking up on the guideline. If you're wondering about the specific dimensions and angles, I really didn't have anything specifically planned. Just eyeball the angles for the cuts until you see an angle that you find visually appealing. With all the bevel cuts made, I took the wood blocks back to the miter saw and made the angle cuts to split the blocks into three pieces. Again, the angles here aren't specific, they're just what I thought looked good. The only thing you need to be cognizant of is leaving enough space in the top to drill a two and three eighths inch hole for a steel plant container to be inserted. Next, I found the center point on the top of each piece so I knew where to drill the hole for the steel plant container. One of the key things for this build coming together was discovering that a two and three eighths inch Forstner bit creates a perfectly sized hole for inexpensive stainless steel condiment containers that are readily available on Amazon. At this point, I discovered that watching the large conical shavings created by a Forstner bit on a drill press is oddly satisfying. holes drilled, it was time to move on to sanding and painting the planters. Normally I don't talk a whole lot about sanding, it's boring, you just kind of do it and get through it. For this project, with the sharp edges and the faceted geometric shape, we really want to maintain those sharp edges, so we don't want to sand it with a random orbit or other type of power sander. So I'm just going to use these soft foam pads to sand it, and they've got a fine side and a very fine side. I'll sand the sides that are gonna be visible raw wood up to the very fine on these pads, and I'll just use the fine on the sides that are gonna be covered with paint, so there'll be a little more texture for the paint to grip to. In order to paint the planters in surfaces only, I covered the sides, top, and bottom of each planter with painter's tape. 
And I went outside to spray paint the planters, but the weather, well, <laughs> it was not cooperating in Chicago that day. So I moved everything back inside, shut it down, and decided to come back later. Once the storm cleared up, I went back to do the spray paint. And for this project, I tried plutonium spray paint. It's similar to graffiti paints that I've really liked in the past and that it goes on thick and is strongly pigmented, but it's designed with a lower spray pressure, which is better for makers and small projects. Link below if you're interested. I used white paint on the spalted maple set and one of the walnut sets, and then used the yellowish orange paint on the second walnut set. Leave a comment below and let me know which of these wooden paint combos is your favorite. So before I started filming this project, I actually made a smaller test version of the planters right here out of walnut. And I tried spraying them with some spray lacquer because I thought that would give good protection if they got splashed with water. However, it just made these planters way too dark for my taste. I just, uh, not a fan of how dark they are. So I'm not gonna do that for the larger walnut planter. So with these walnut planters, I really like how the natural finish looks. I like the tone of it against the white. And in order to try to keep it as natural as possible, I'm just gonna go ahead and use just some simple paste finishing wax to try and keep a natural color on it. Now for the maple, I do want the grain to pop and I don't mind it getting a little darker. I want that spalting to come out. So I'm gonna use an oil-based finish and I'm just gonna go with my standby maker brand simple finish for these. While the finish dried, I decided to do a little learning and designed a simple planner liner in Fusion 360 and then printed it out with my 3D printer. Now this is obviously totally optional, but something pretty cool that I just wanted to throw in in case any of you have 3D printers and are interested. And with that, I was ready to add the plants. I want to talk briefly about the inspiration for this video because it's, well, all of you guys out there. So I'd used these planners in some of my past videos to stage projects. And I got a lot of comments asking, where can I get those? Is there a video showing how to make those? And the truth is that I actually bought these from Etsy. I just discovered that the seller who I got these from has stopped making them and offering them for sale. So I figured it would be fun to reverse engineer these planners and show everyone else how they could make them. So this is a really easy project. You can really make it in about a day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I wanna take a minute to say thank you to Squarespace for making this video possible. I personally had my website on Squarespace for a couple years now and have nothing but good things to say about them. I can truly say that they are a powerful and beautiful online platform for creating your website. Squarespace's tools allow you to quickly and easily create a modern eye-catching website. You can choose from tons of designer and award-winning templates, and their templates are created with modern web browsers and mobile apps in mind, so your website will look great regardless of whether it's being viewed on a phone, tablet, laptop, or television. Another feature I love is that Squarespace allows you to link to all of your social media accounts. So when I make a blog post to industrialmaker.com, I can simultaneously post to Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and so on. If you need to create a new website or update an existing one, then head over to squarespace.com slash industrialmaker to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Not only will you get a great deal on an awesome website, but you'll be supporting this channel and the free content you get here. 
So much love to all of you and to Squarespace for making this video possible. As always, if you like this, make sure to hit the subscribe and bell button, hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know. And that's it for this time. I'll see you next time.